In biology and in science overall, diffusion is one of the basic principles that once you get it, it is usable or applicable in a bunch of different places. So let's start in with the definition and then look a little bit closer and figure out why does it happen. So diffusion is called or defined as the movement of particles from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. Now, if you notice, that's a really long phrase. And so scientists have figured out a way to describe this area of high concentration and low concentration in just two words, and that's concentration gradient. In general, in science, they'll use the term gradient to refer to a difference between two areas. So you could talk about a thermal gradient. It's hot outside, it's cooler inside. If you and your friends are of different heights, you could arrange yourselves in a height gradient, where the tallest person's on one side, the lowest person's on the other. So in general, this just means that stuff moves from where there's lots of it to where there's not so much of it. And you gotta be careful though, it's not just the grand total quantity of things that are moving from an area of lots of things to little things. It's based on concentration. The amount of stuff in any one small area compared to its immediate neighboring area. So let's take a look at how that would work. Now you should know that atoms and molecules are constantly moving and vibrating, kind of like little kids in a kindergarten class. The more temperature or heat energy you provide those atoms and molecules, the faster they move. It's kind of like giving your kindergarten class a whole bunch of candy. As you add more and more candy, they start moving faster and faster and bouncing around until they're out of their seats and running all over the playground. All right? So here we have, say, a block of dye in some water. Now, I have a lot of these little molecules right here and they're all vibrating. Are they vibrating in one direction? No, they're vibrating all over the place. So some of them are going this way, some that way, some that way, some that way. So as time goes by, some of them wind up over here as they spread out. And they bump into water molecules and then bounce off this way, and then they bounce off that way, and this guy's moving here, and that guy's moving there, and this guy's moving there. They're just randomly bouncing all over the place. And this continues to happen as they spread out randomly, like the little children in the playground. They're running around all over, bouncing into walls, bouncing off of each other. The occasional yard duty is yelling at them to get on the bench, whatever. And they just bounce around all over the place, and till you get relatively equal distribution throughout the beaker of fluid. Now, do they stop? No, but every time one of these guys moves this way, one of these guys moves that way to replace him. Not on purpose, it's just by random statistical averaging. It's kind of like if you look at the freeway at rush hour and you count the number of cars that are there and then you wait 10 minutes and you count the number of cars that are there, it's probably roughly the same amount, because every time a car gets onto the freeway, another one gets off. And so you reach this equilibrium, but because the molecules haven't stopped moving, they're still bouncing around, it's called a dynamic equilibrium. Now, to focus in on this one last time, I'm going to give you an example that you might see in one of your textbooks or on a test. And that's where you have two sides of a beaker, one with high concentration, one with low concentration. Again, what's that called? concentration gradient and things move down the concentration gradient. So if I look right here, this is a membrane that's separating the two sides, but these small red dots can pass through. Every second, 10 of these dots are passing through this hole randomly. There's a bunch moving all of the other directions, but the only direction I care about right now is from one side to the other. And randomly, two are moving the other direction. So what is the net change after I subtract? I see a grand total of eight moving over, over here after I've subtracted the two. So overall, I'm gonna see gradually a bunch of these dots on this side move over onto that side. A few of these guys will move back over, but I don't really notice the effect. It's kind of like, um, uh, let's see, in China, there are a number of people emigrating from China to the United States. Similarly, I'm sure there's a few people from the United States immigrating back to China or over to China, but overall we see a net migration towards the United States. And these things just cancel each other out. So we have a lot of movement this way, not so much back. And that's diffusion. You can see it in all areas of science or biology from the communication of one cell in your brain to another cell, the diffusion of neurotransmitters, to the diffusion of glucose from your bloodstream into your cells.